ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. The Drive. Elmore deep, left side three, and good! From 30 feet, John Elmore! The Drive with Paul Swan. Welcome into another edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're getting you set for the weekend. How are you guys doing? we got a lot to get into today. We're going to talk Marshall softball. Thundering Herd, they had to um, go to an extra game. That's underway right now. We'll hopefully get the final of that one as earlier today. The Thundering Herd losing to Louisiana Tech 5-4. to four. So right now... Uh, they are uh, hoping they can get back to the championship game. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but I want to tell you what's coming on the show today. We've got Tim Stevens from the Herald Dispatch. We're going to talk about a uh, quarterback that signed as a preferred walk-on with the Thundering Herd, so we'll do that a little bit later on. Also, we'll get your phone calls in on the Miller Lite phone lines at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste only, 96 calories. It is the original light beer, so with Tim coming up, we'll cover that. And, of course, uh, tonight we only have one game to talk about, and really that's Golden State and Houston. That should be a fun one. I'm going to actually tune into that one tonight. 9 o'clock if you're interested in staying up late to watch a little West Coast basketball. And if you're not into the basketball, well, you got baseball action as Pittsburgh's taking on St. Louis. And we go on the air with our broadcast today at 7.50 p.m. Now the St. Louis Cardinals and the Pirates are going to start a four-game series. Bush Stadium, the place to be if you're looking for action in St. Louis on a Thursday night. Or I'm sorry, a Friday night. Pittsburgh, um, well, I'll tell you this. Pittsburgh, they had won three in a row before falling to Texas. And uh, the Cardinals right now are a terrible one and six in their past seven outings. So we're looking forward to seeing maybe the Pirates snap out of the funk they got into. We'll see if they can maybe start winning some games on the road, and that's coming up tonight again, 7.50, right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 9.30. So yesterday was fun if you are a hockey fan, at least until the third period. Boston Bruins beat the Carolina Hurricanes 5-2 in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Final. Boston had two power play goals in 28 seconds on separate power play chances to give them a 3-2 lead. You know, according to the Elias Sports Bureau, that's the second shortest span between power play goals in Bruins postseason history and the shortest since a 23-second span on April 11, 1976. So it's been a while since that's happened. The Bruins went 2-5 and five on power plays after going 2-11 and 11 in their previous four games, and the Bruins score the final four games of that game. They were trailing in the third period, and they score the final four. Unfortunately, not a happy day over in the sports information office at Marshall University. Our very own Jason Coyer probably grimacing all morning long when he arrived over to the complex. So hopefully things will pan out for him. We don't have hockey tonight, but as I mentioned, we've got NBA action tonight, and then hockey starts getting back into the swing of things. This is kind of weird. I've gotten used to actually just first round, second round. I had a hockey game every day. Pretty much I could look forward to. What am I going to watch on TV tonight? Well, I'm going home. I'm going to watch the playoffs. I'm going to go watch a hockey game. I'll watch some other things too, but I've got hockey to watch, and, and that was fun. So this is kind of strange for me. And, of course, Mother's Day is coming up this weekend as well, so hopefully you've got something planned for your mom. Take good care of her. Buy her something nice. Take her to dinner. Cook dinner for her. Clean the house. Do something nice for mom. And that's coming up this Sunday. So a happy Mother's Day early to all the mothers out there. Well, NBA, we did have one game to talk about last night in the Philadelphia 76ers beat the Toronto Raptors 112 to 101 to force game 7 the Sixers fifth win this postseason by double figures their most in a single postseason since 1982 i think i remember when the Philadelphia 76ers were last good you know for a while i was a lakers fan but i kind of was a 76ers fan. i'm a kid after all i'm a kid and you know, Dr. J, 
who didn't love Dr. J back in the day. Everyone loved Dr. J. So you can't go back to those days of the Philadelphia 76ers and Dr. J. But you know what? The Sixers forcing Game 7. So, uh uh-oh, watch out, Philadelphia. You don't have the Celtics in the playoffs anymore. You've got the 76ers maybe getting themselves further. The Toronto Raptors could be eliminated. This is... I think finally shaping up to an NBA postseason that I actually care about. But, of course, my focus will be on Golden State and Houston. Again, that's 9 o'clock ESPN tonight. Now, some Marshall news to talk about today. Briefly, Capital Midland's Ty Sturm accepting a preferred walk-on spot to play basketball at Marshall University. So uh, Dan's starting to load the bench up a little bit, and we'll see how everything works out for him. Of course, uh, nothing official there just yet, but Ty uh, making the announcement that he is going to be uh, playing basketball at Marshall as a preferred walk-on. So the other local sports item to talk about today before we hit the break and talk to Tim Stevens is uh, Cabell Midland defeating Hurricane. 8-6. 8-6. to six. This is the Class AAA Region 4 Section, Section 2 Tournament, forcing a championship showdown at 6 p.m. And uh, I'm going to ask Tim a little bit about that briefly, and he'll be joining us here in the next few minutes. Uh, we're going to talk Fairland High School football with him. We're going to talk Marshall football with him. And, of course, um, Campbell Midland. Hey, you know what? The Knights could make their way to the Region Tournament. How about that? That would be something to see, so we'll keep an eye on that as well for next week when we start the week back up. And I can promise you this, Monday we're going to be back at the Union Pub and Grill. I've actually confirmed, I've laid eyes on Dave Wall. She is back. We'll have him here. We'll be at the Union because under his contract, which is uh, really, if you've seen his contract, you would cry for him. But part of his uh, negotiation was, i got to be at the Union. If I'm doing the show, Union. So that's where we'll be on Monday. But when we come back from break, we're going to hear from Tim Stevens from the Herald Dispatch. Marshall's got themselves a quarterback. We'll find out more about him. And maybe this is a good sign. Maybe we're going to see a lot more green in the stadium come fall. A lot of Fairland dragon green, but still green, and it's good enough for me. We'll do that when we continue with today's edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's time to talk high school and Marshall all in the same segment. That's how good it's going to be. We've got joining us on the program from the Herald Dispatch. He's been covering Thundering Herd Athletics since, well, uh, longer than I could remember. And he's Tim Stevens, and he's now with us on the program. So let's get this straight here. You were covering Thundering Herd Athletics probably uh, before I was even enrolled at Marshall University, so that's been a while. <laughs> I probably was covering it before you were born. I don't know. I'm really old, you know. Just a little bit, yeah. I mean, you've seen the good, you've seen the bad. You were there. Yeah, again, you were there during the championship years, uh, one double A, and then you left, and you know what happened there. So now you're back, and Marshall's winning bowl games again. I think there's a connection between you and Marshall's success. I, I think so. It had nothing to do with, you know, Pennington and Moss, Leftwich and Pruitt and those guys. You know, it was all me. It's, uh, you know, I'm the, I'm the total reason for Marshall's success on the football field. Uh, and I'm the winningest beat writer in the history of, um, of Marshall football. So, hey, you know, uh, they, they need to put me on the payroll or something here. Do you guys keep records of that? Like how many games you've covered where they won versus how many games they've lost? Do you guys do that? Uh, not officially, but I would I'd probably have to put my record up against anybody who's ever covered them since uh, I had them. Uh, I, I, took, well, I started covering them in 1984 when they had their first winning season. And I covered them all the way up through uh, 2001. So. I don't think there was ever a better stretch anywhere in Marshall football history than than uh, from '84 through 2001. So yeah, I feel pretty good about my record in that one. Uh, and like I say, those guys made my job easy. They really had the easiest job in town, uh, you know, covering winning football at Marshall. So that was that was just a boatload of fun for me. It was a joy. Tim Stevens, our guest from the Herald Dispatch, and uh, you've been pretty busy. Uh, let's get the easy one out of the way first. Campbell Midland beating Hurricane eight to six, and 
the Knights uh, have a shot here. They have a really legitimate shot. Yes, they do. You know, the Hurricane has kind of been their uh, nemesis for, for several years. Midland's gotten so close to the state tournament, they lose the Hurricane, but they have a chance tonight. Um, uh, the Hur- Hurricane will probably throw the Blackwell kid, who's a really good pitcher. Midland's problem is they didn't know who they were going to pitch tonight. And it's probably going to be Charlie Holstaff. You know, everybody who has an arm and can get people out will probably pitch uh, for as long as they can. Uh, but, yeah, they, they have a chance to uh, to do some damage because, you know, whoever they pitch, they can definitely hit. Uh, you know, they score eight runs on Hurricane, that's hard to do. So uh, that should be a really good ball game tonight. Uh, Rick Elmore's up there covering that for us. And, and that's that's it's a shame that somebody has to lose that one because those are both really good baseball teams. Now on to the good stuff. And, of course, you are sort of the unofficial beat reporter of Fairland High School. That's your beat. <laughs> I live about three blocks from there, and they have been really good in, in uh, well, gosh, just about everything here of late. You know, they've won OVC titles in uh, boys' and girls' basketball for several years in a row, and the football team made the playoffs last year. And baseball won the OVC this year. So, yeah, if you're – if you're really good like that, you get a lot of coverage. And, and being, being that I live close to uh, close to the school, it makes it easy to just run over there and cover ball games. But, uh, a lot of really good people over there. Not that we wish this on them, but if they were winless, you're still covering them because you're three blocks away. Come on, you know better. <laughs> yeah, and it's a big it's a big area of readership for us. You know, Eastern Lawrence County. Uh, you know, there's a, there are a lot of people over there that take the Herald Dispatch and. And, you know, we uh, we try to give the readers uh, what they want. So we do uh, we do a lot of uh, a lot of coverage over there, and, uh, you know, as we do with Ironton in football season and such and, and various places. But, yeah, that's one of our big uh, big circulation areas. So we'll, we'll see the Dragons a lot. And that's why I got you on the show, because not only do you know about Fairland High School, you can tell me everything I need to know about their all-state passer, Joel Lambiotti, or Lambiot. See, mm-hmm. that, e get, that E is silent. That E is silent. So Joe Lambiot <laughs> signing with the Thundering, her preferred walk-on, and he chose Marshall over places like Miami of Ohio, uh, Marietta College, West Virginia Wesleyan. Uh, there are some other schools that are also interested in him, but he decided to go with the Thundering Herd, take the opportunity there. What does Marshall get with him? I get a, uh, a very smart, talented kid. This isn't just a... This kid's not just a walk-on who is, uh, you know, roster filler, a guy that, that that plays on the scout team. This guy has a shot to be a, a really good football player. Uh, he's a terrific quarterback and threw for uh, more than 4,000, more than 4,500 yards in his career for 2580 this past season, 32 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Played in the Ohio North-South game. That's a hard game to get in. It really is. You know, you have to, you have to be – quite talented to play in the North-South game in Ohio. Um, there's some really big-time players there. Those are guys that are going to the Big Ten and various places, and he did very well. He threw a touchdown pass in the first quarter of that game. Um, really smart kid, uh, like a 4.6 GPA, something like that, and uh, 24 on the ACT. Uh, he's going to medical school, and that, that he's going to medical school ruled out a lot of schools that were, were recruiting him, even some D1s, because they didn't have... Uh, you know what he wants to go into, and and so, so Marshall did, and, and he uh, he liked what he saw uh, at practice, and, and decided yes he'll accept the accept the invited walk on offer there, and he said that's a good get for for the herd. I'm kind of curious, uh, what were some of the other D ones, if you know, uh, that were interested in him? Uh, mostly Mac schools um, and, and some FBS, um, uh, or I'm sorry, FCS schools, Southern Conference types, and Youngstown, and some teams such as those. So he could uh, he could definitely play at at a uh, you know D one D one football. Uh, but you know he's he's thinking beyond football too. He's he's going to go to medical school. Wants to go into radiology, and and you know, his dad is uh, Joe Lambiot of Riverside Physical Therapy. So he has that uh, you know medical background there, the history of uh, with um, with treating people has a really good heart so so he knows what he wants to do and he knows that, that football is not a lifetime thing um a really smart bright kid so when that shows up uh, on and off the field he makes good decisions on the field he's 
you know, he'll throw the ball away uh, when he when he doesn't have a receiver open. Uh, he can run, I and mean, he ran for about 650 yards and 10 touchdowns this season. Made just a phenomenal play running the ball against Athens. He's, he looks like he's tackled, but he's on top of the defensive back who brought him down, who tried to bring him down. So because Joel hadn't hit the ground, he jumps up at about the 10-yard line, runs into the end zone for a touchdown. Most most players would have just been down. You know, would have just thought, oh, we're, we're down, that play's over. Uh, Joel was smart enough to, to jump up and run in for a touchdown, and Fairland beat Athens that night. And Fairland was the only team to beat Athens in the regular season, and that play was uh, essentially what won it for them. Tim Stevens, our guest from the Herald-Dispatch, we're discussing uh, all state passer Joel Lamb- Lambiot who has uh, agreed to be a preferred walk-on with the Thundering Herd. Is he the type of kid that maybe is one of those diamond and roughs, maybe players um, develop into you know a starter that schools sometimes overlook or just pay, take a pass on because they don't want to put the time in? Sure. Absolutely. He, could, he fits into that mode. No, I'm not... Not saying that he's going to wind up starting against Notre Dame. He, you know, he might, he, he might not, but he at least has a shot at doing that because of his physical and mental abilities. And he's a good size kid. He's six two and and about two ten roughly. So you know, he's uh, he's not coming in here scrawny and uh, you know, building his weight up for three years before he gets a chance. So Melvin Cunningham is his coach, and of course, Melvin was an All American quarterback at Marshall. Uh, Melvin coaches now at Fairland, and and while he didn't compare him to Chad Bennington, he put him in the in the same category um, as a cerebral passer uh, kid who's going to who's going to come in and and uh, and play smart uh, kid who's got talent and uh, just needs to uh, be able to display it someone who's kind of overlooked and Melvin also mentioned that you know kids at smaller schools and you know, Fairland has 400 students maybe they oftentimes get overlooked by by major schools in favor of uh, of uh, the bigger, you know, the AAA size schools, or or you know, six A's in Florida, or the uh, Division One teams in Ohio, that kind of thing. Fair one small. Uh, uh, they, you know, if you play there, then then your competition isn't what maybe a, a Cincinnati or a Cleveland school is. So so kids sometimes get overlooked, even though they're quite capable players. And Melvin was telling me that that Joel is, is that kind of guy. He could he could play at the Division One level in Ohio, which is you know, the big school level or class triple A in West Virginia. Tim, do you think that we're seeing a trend, an upward trend, more kids locally are finding their way on the Thundering Herd roster? It, it just feels like maybe a few years ago you might not have seen a kid like this make his way to the Thundering Herd, but you're seeing more and more of that now. It just you know, we're seeing talent finally be discovered. We knew the talent was here. It just feels like it's finally being discovered in the area. It, it really is. I mean, you know, kids showing up uh, at Marshall and and elsewhere. It's just astonishing how schools suddenly have discovered that that kids in West Virginia and kids here in the tri-state can play because this area was overlooked so often, so often. I mean, how many kids, you know, at, at Huntington High and Huntington East and Barbersville and Milton and Ironton and then later on Midland and Huntington High. Yeah. And such who in Spring Valley who could could really play never got a shot. And now you look at it, and, and players are showing up on Marshall's roster, and you have the Ohio States and Alabamas and Tennessees of the world coming in here and recruiting kids. Uh, you know, linebacker at Ironton, uh, Reed Carrico has I think it's twenty five offers now, including one from Marshall, and uh, most of those are, are you know Big Ten and SEC schools, and, and not. Not the lower ends of the Big Ten and SEC either. He's gotten offers from from uh, you know, the the Ohio states and and Tennessees of the world. So it, yeah, it's, it's really amazing how how this area has boomed in the last five years or so with major colleges coming in here and recruiting. Uh, and it's not just football; it's other sports as well. Tim Stevens, our guest from the Herald Dispatch, and I kind of feel like also it's partially because. We've got a group of coaches with a lot of these high school football programs that kind of have an idea. All right, how do I get my kids seen? Well, oh, you're interested in this kid. Well, hey, what about this kid here? What about this kid here? And you'll see sometimes players take their visit, take some of their buddies with them as well. They do. You, you know, if you can get a kid's buddy to come along, there's a bigger chance he's, you're going to get him and a bigger chance he's going to stay. 
So that's that's smart recruiting if you have the scholarship room to do it. It, it kind of reminds me of a story of a few years ago, uh, several years ago, it was 1991, when uh, Chris Selfo was Marshall's offensive line coach, and he went to a, a junior college in North Carolina to look at an offensive lineman. And he wound up discovering a, a wide receiver who was pretty good, and they didn't get the offensive lineman, but they took the wide receiver as their 25th man, 25th scholarship that year. And that wide receiver turned out to be Troy Brown. So, <laughs> you know, you uh, you see now kids will come in or coaches will come in here to recruit a Darnell Wright from Huntington, and they'll discover a Brockton Blair at linebacker. Or they'll go to uh, Spring Valley to see a Doug Nestor, and they – they wind up saying, oh, this Grayson Malashevich kid can play. Or, you know, this, this uh, Milam kid at, at offensive, uh, on the offensive line, he can play too. So, yeah, that's uh, you're, you're right. Um, people come in here, coaches come in here to see one kid, and they're discovering that uh, they have a lot of teammates who are, who are nearly as good. Tim Steam is our guest from the Herald Dispatch. And, of course, uh, you know Tim from his years of covering the Thundering Herd, high school athletics across the Tri-State. So what are you working on? What's uh, what's coming up for the next few days for you over at the Herald Dispatcher? What are you guys in particular coming out with soon? Because I know, uh, let's put it this way, I think your sports staff has gotten bigger. It feels like it anyway. <laughs> I don't know. We're uh... – we're, we're, we get a lot of guys out there hustling. Uh, you know, it's really good, talented people with uh, Rick McCann, Grant Trailer, and and Rick Elmore, and Chuck Landon. You know, they uh, they all do a good job. And, uh, this week coming up, we're going to have the state tennis tournament in the morning. Uh, Huntington High's JJ Mercer has uh, done really well. Cowboy Midland's girls are doing really well. So Grant's up there covering it for us. Rick Elmore covering the Midland Hurricane baseball game tonight. I have a story coming up on a uh, local basketball player, Ty Sturm from Cabell Midland, committed to walk on to Marshall basketball. And uh, Cabell Midland defensive back, J.J. Roberts, committed to Wake Forest. I'll have that story coming up here in the next day or two. And, you know, lots of lots of good things, lots of fun. You know, we're getting paid to watch ball games. This is a fun job, and you know how that is. Yeah, we, it can be we, fun uh, sometimes. It can be yeah, fun not, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, most of the time. I mean, we're not exactly working in coal mines here. But, uh, you're right; it does have its moments. But overall, it's uh, you know it's a lot of fun. You know, working with coaches and kids and and things. Every now and then, you get a fan who's uh, interesting, shall we say? But but overall, it's a, it's a, just a joy to to work in sports. Tim Stevens, our guest from the Herald Dispatch. And since you mentioned Ty Stern, we mentioned that earlier that he has accepted a preferred walk on spot to play basketball with the Thundering Herd without giving away your story and people losing incentive to read about what you've got to say. Uh, what can you tell us about Ty and uh, his decision? Another another heady kid, smart kid who's really developed from his freshman year to his senior year. And the, the key, key for Ty was his junior year, Rick Chapin is his head coach there. Rick Chapin revamped Ty's jump shot. Yeah, that was the weakest part of his game. And being a 6-1 guard, you know, if you can't shoot, then, then your your chances of playing college ball aren't real good. And he turned turned Ty into a to a really good shooter. Uh, he's a kid. He averaged 11.2 points per game and, and about seven rebounds. Uh, athletic kid. A smart, heady kid. Reminds you somewhat of Luke Thomas, who's uh, on Marshall's roster right now. Uh, was a was a preferred walk on as well. Um, Ty's kind of kind of similar to Luke somewhat. Maybe doesn't have quite the range, but as a as a good local player that's that's worth a shot, can come onto your squad and help you. You know that's how Austin Luke developed. Uh, a, a kid who came from Soda County that walks on at Marshall and winds up being one of the better players in school history. Getting back to that point we were talking about earlier with kids who are in this area finding their way more and more on Thundering Herd rosters, I think Dan D'Antoni maybe led the way, at least uh, for the big two, because anybody that plays in the state of West Virginia, he's probably on their doorstep already. Yeah, oh, no doubt. He recruits West Virginia hard. I mean, if you're from, uh, if you're West, a West Virginia kid, you're going to hear from Marshall. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um you know, West Virginia and Europe, I think it is. As, uh, <laughs> as Danny's recruiting ground, it seems like yeah, it's, it's obviously, obviously bigger than that. But he's done a done a great job going in state and getting kids who can can play and helping them develop. And you know, there's a there's a lot of pride uh, in Marshall and West Virginia 
uh, within the state here. It's you know he's Danny's proud to be from here, and you know the hillbilly ball and all that kind of stuff, and the the t-shirts is, is part of that. But uh, his pride in in West Virginia and and the talent that this state produces is genuine. So he's he's done a really good job getting kids to stay home. The travel log looks like this: Kermit, Man, Chapmanville, uh, Helsinki. <laughs> Yugoslavia, <laughs> Croatia. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the travel budget is either either really small or really big, depending on uh, you know which kid you're recruiting, I guess. So, uh, and, and it's funny, it's fun to get the the kids from Croatia in here with the with the kids from Chapmanville or something, you know, and and it's just entirely different cultures, but they mesh together and so much so much fun to. To watch uh, watch those kids kind of discover one another and and see that there's something uh, something different from what they're used to in their world. Tim Stevens, our guest from the Herald Dispatch, covering all things sports for the newspaper, and uh, looking forward to reading your story on Ty. And of course, uh, good work on uh, everything you do so far. And give my best to everybody over there. I hardly see those guys. Uh, we've got this off season going, so I haven't got to uh, hang out with my guy Hedge. Rick McCann, I haven't got a chance to hang out with the columnist himself. Grant's just all over the place, so I never see him. <laughs> We're going to have to do something about that. We'll have to get together and let you buy us all lunch. How's that sound? You do know where I work, right? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah, exactly. Uh, hello. You, uh, you know my budget, right? Hey, I will say uh, this. Uh, the boss uh, bought us all today uh, pizza and and wings for a celebration lunch today. So uh, we did get free lunch today. Oh, wow. You can't be the prize. And you didn't invite me over. Ah, I'm telling you. Have you seen radio people? Um, we, um, <laughs> we don't get three straight meals a day. Uh, you know, so when there's free food, we're there. <laughs> a lot like sports writers. Exactly. You, our, you just won't show up for anything. <laughs> yeah, our meal is probably the the only meal of the day is probably the one we get at the at the at the stadium usually or the arena. <laughs> yes, I, I can relate to that at times. I understand where you're coming from, buddy. Tim Stevens, our guest from the Herald Dispatch. Good talking to you. We'll catch up real soon. I hope. Sounds good, Paul. I always enjoy it. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Tim Stevens from the Herald Dispatch. Your unofficial, official beat writer of Fairland High School since he lives about three blocks away. We'll continue with today's edition of The Drive after the news here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Friday, May 10th edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. we got good news. Earlier, we were telling you that the Thundering Herd would have to see if they could get into the championship game. They lost earlier today to Louisiana Tech 5-4, to so they had to play in, I guess, the loser bracket, however you want to describe that, and they won. That faced North Texas again, and they beat North Texas again, one nothing. So the Thundering Herd will play Louisiana Tech tomorrow in the Conference USA Championship game. How about that? Marshall softball, Megan Smith on the verge of getting this team a championship in softball. That's amazing. First-year coach comes in. Now, she's not new to the game, but still, first-year coach for a team comes in, takes what this team has, builds them up, you had a lot to work with to begin with, so this was not a program that was bare of talent. I thought over the last few years, Sean DeStanton had did a great job of setting this program up for success. And, of course, you come in here and you're trying to put your own identity on this team. And I think that's what's happened here. Marshall Softball has its own identity, but still it's very recognizable as a program that has been successful I know we're looking ahead. I can look ahead. Coach can look ahead now to the championship game, but I can look ahead to the championship game as well and beyond. You win this one, you're going to the NCAA tournament. How about that? First year, you lead the program to an NCAA berth. That would be amazing for Marshall softball. Well-deserved getting back into the championship game. That's where you expect Marshall softball, one of the better programs for the Thundering Herd. And You hope all the programs are competitive. And after all, 
if you're going to have a program, you might as well put everything you can into it. And I think Marshall's done a really good job with the Olympic sports, but especially softball. Softball has thrived over the years. I hope women's basketball can really advance. They, they got some postseason experience. You're losing Shana Gore. But I think that's a program that we could see some success with in the future. Dan D'Antoni's losing a couple of really key guys. You lose C.J. Burks. You lose John Elmore. You lose Rondell Watson, one of my favorite players. I loved the way Rondell Watson played. He was always out there hard, underrated, whatever you needed from him. He was out there to give it to you. And they've got some work to do. But – the same time, I think the foundations are all there. All right, enough of that. We're going to take our next break. Uh, we've got to make up some time. We'll come back, and we will continue on with today's edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Don't worry. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's our final segment of The Drive. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Stanley Cup playoffs taking a day off tomorrow. Western Conference final. St. Louis Blues and the San Jose Sharks. That's going to be a fun series. Here's just the, the bare minimum you need to know about this. Now, the Sharks have home ice, and they're 6-2 and two at home. And the Blues are 5-1 and one away from home. So you've got one of the better teams on the road in the playoffs against one of the better teams at home in the playoffs. This is going to go seven. This is going to go seven games. And nobody thought that this would be the pairing. San Jose, St. Louis, did you think that that was going to be your pairing? You probably didn't. The Sharks, of course, they've been – like the little engine that could. And then there's the Blues. The Blues weren't even picked to be here. They were in last place back in January. And the Sharks, they were 3 nothing down. 3 nothing down to the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round. And guess what? They come back, win that, and here we are. They've moved on, and so St. Louis. So, again, this is the bare minimum. I'm not going to go into this, but I'll say this. Both teams really, the way they're winning, they haven't looked good. San Jose's not that good five on five. Not that solid right now. St. Louis hasn't been good five on five either. So I'm interested to see. I'm really hoping that we're going to get a good series, but I'm interested to see how this is going to play out. And, of course, we'll find out. Of course, you can listen to the Stanley Cup playoffs all playoff long on our sister station, Cat Sports, 93-3 and 13-40. Now, if you weren't with us earlier, Thundering Herd Softball winning their game today in the elimination bracket. They beat North Texas 1-0 after losing earlier in the day to Louisiana Tech. So guess what? They get to play Louisiana Tech again in the championship game, and that's coming up tomorrow. Hopefully, Thundering Herd can walk away with the Conference USA championship. And, of course, we got baseball action for you tonight. Pittsburgh and St. Louis, 7.50 is going to be our airtime right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, and also Golden State Warriors taking on the Houston Rockets. And that's your really your only game tonight outside of baseball, 9 o'clock ESPN. Of course, you know we're all rooting for the Houston Rockets there. And don't forget, if you missed any part of today's show, you can always go back, catch it on the podcast. You can go to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Tune in, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast is where you'll find today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So I think I'm looking forward to Monday already because I'm hoping on Monday we're talking about a conference championship game for Marshall, a victory there. We're talking about that. And then NCAA tournament. That would be a great way to start the Monday. We'll talk about that. And, of course, we'll be doing that at the Union Pub and Grill. And, of course, you know, I'm going to break down the Stanley Cup. We're getting into the uh, thick of it now. NBA Finals are starting to actually heat up, get my interest now. So maybe 
maybe I'm going to follow that a little tighter than I, I have been. Again, I've been following Golden State Houston. That series has been interesting to me, only again because the Marshall connection with Houston, but it's starting to heat up. I think it really is. And we're getting to the point now where we're starting to see some Game 7s in the NBA. So that's really making it interesting for me. Just to be fair, NBA playoffs really haven't been that compelling of a story for me. But, of course, I've been obsessing over the hockeys over the last few weeks. You've got to forgive me there. I've Every night, it's just been great. Just go home. There it is. Let's watch some hockey. And that first round, there was hockey all over. NBC and their networks had to have four channels to cover it all. That's that's the kind of night I want to have. I go home. Let's watch. Have some hockey here. But uh, I tell you what, this has been a good postseason period. I mean, the NBA has been interesting enough. And maybe, just maybe, without LeBron James... NBAs may be a little more interesting. I don't know. I really think the offseason drama for LeBron's probably been more compelling, to be honest, because I have no idea what's going to happen with the Lakers. There's talks of trading LeBron. There's talks of maybe this isn't a destination. Of course, they couldn't come to terms with Ty Lue. Trying to get a coach in there. They kind of lowballed him. He respectfully said, thank you, but no thank you. Running out of options here. There's not going to be a splashy coach hiring. When you're interviewing several coaches and Ty Lu, who I thought Ty Lu's resume was okay. I think a lot of his resume is fueled by LeBron James. And possibly if he could get back with LeBron James, recapture some of that magic, that would have been great. But now I'm looking at a dysfunctional. L.A. Lakers, and we've talked about this before, how can the L.A. Clippers be the more relevant team in the City of Angels? I can't fathom that this time has come. Just poor mismanagement of the Los Angeles Lakers, and it happens. I mean, we saw the Celtics go through a slump, and we're kind of seeing the Celtics go through a slump again, but we've seen these heritage legacy franchises. But isn't that good for basketball? that we're not seeing the same teams over and over. We're not seeing the Lakers always being the dominant team. I think it's good for basketball to actually mix it up. And this is coming from a Lakers fan. It's really good that we're seeing more of the NBA and not just narrowly focusing on, say, Boston, L.A. I still think a good New York Knicks team will be good for the NBA. I do believe that still. I'm never going to see that in my lifetime, but I believe a good New York basketball product will be good for the NBA. Just because you've got the number one market in the world, right? New York City. And if you can get basketball to a point where it's actually relevant, the fans care, but if you can get it to a point where it's actually relevant, then... I think you got something there. So a lot of action we'll get into on Monday. Looking forward to getting back here with you. Uh, Yeah, I know. We're almost out of time, but I'm already hoping we can turn the clock really fast and get back here so we can get into all of this. And, again, don't forget, if you want to catch all the Stanley Cup action, it's our sister station, Catch Sports from 93.3 and 1340. We'll have Pirates baseball for you all weekend long right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, and hopefully on Monday we're talking about a Marshall Championship in the Conference USA Softball Tournament as they are in the championship game. They will face off against Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech beating the Thundering Herd earlier today to send them to the elimination bracket by a score of 5-4, to four, but the Thundering Herd did battle back. Maybe the Thundering Herd can get the better of Louisiana Tech tomorrow, so that's our hope for everyone. And again, Don't forget, podcast, you miss any part of the show, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, tune in, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast is where you're going to find today's edition of The Drive. I want to thank today's guest, Tim Stevens, coming on from the Herald Dispatch. Appreciate him for joining us and uh, talking a little Marshall football, also going over a couple of things happening in the Tri-State as far as high school football and basketball is concerned. 
Of course, um, Fairland High School All-State passer Joel Lambiot signing with the Thundering Herd. And then Cabell Midland's Ty Sturm accepting a preferred walk-on spot to play basketball at Marshall and Tim's going to have a story on that with the Herald Dispatch. And that's going to do it for this edition of the program. Back on Monday, we'll join you from the Union Pub and Grill. Hope to see you there. For Tim, I'm Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.